Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to September 2025, our latest CTSS quiz. It's hard to believe the summer is over, but hopefully we'll have an Indian summer. Anyway, I have 10 great cases, and let's get started. The most likely diagnosis in this 50-ish year old female is, well, I see a large mass in the body of the pancreas. It's solid, and if you look very carefully, there may be a honeycomb-type appearance. The pancreatic tail is atrophic. There's no common duct dilatation, and I don't see anything else. Mucinous cystic neoplasm by location is the thought, and the age would be fine, but usually it's more cystic, not so solid-looking, so I don't like that. Neuroendocrine tumors are typically more vascular, and spent tumors often will have calcification and cystic and solid components. When you look carefully at this case, particularly if I showed you the venous phase imaging, you would see some of the honeycombing in the patient's mass, and then you would go with the serous cystadenoma as the most likely diagnosis. The most likely diagnosis in this 50-ish year old male well, I see a large complex cystic lesion in the head of the pancreas with septations. Although it's a male, it still could be a mucinous cystic neoplasm. It's unlikely to be a neuroendocrine tumor because they can be cystic, but I don't see wall enhancement and I don't see increased vascularity. Theoretically, it could be a serous cystadenoma, oligocystic in type, and it could be an IPMN, though it is large for an IPMN. But again, IPMNs, you might see a dilated pancreatic duct, which you do visualize here. Uh, commonly, um, this might even be a mixed type IPMN. And so what you'll need to do here is do EUS and sample the fluid, and this ended up being an IPMN. Again, cirrhosis adenoma is a consideration. MCM, you can't rule out. So it's kind of a difficult case, but you know you're going to EUS. It's not a case where you say, oh, come back next year. The most likely diagnosis in this 40-ish year old is, well, there's an anterior mediastinal mass. It's perfectly triangular in shape. It looks like an arrowhead. But for a 40-year-old, the thymus typically has fatty involution. You don't really see the thymus, or you see a minimal amount. So you could think, well, could this be a thymoma? But the shape is so great for a triangle. Same thing, teratoma is usually irregular and eccentric, and thymic carcinoid usually is a large, bulky mass. When you see a lesion that looks like this, you better think about thymic hyperplasia. It could be the sequel of chemotherapy, it could be a result of thyroid disease, or several other reasons. But this was thymic hyperplasia. The least likely diagnosis in this patient, well, what do we have? We have a very large spleen. Could be polycythemia vera, could be any of the myelofibrosis type processes, could be lymphoma, mononucleosis gets big spleens. The one thing that does not get big spleens is sickle cell disease. A variant sickle thalassemia, maybe the spleen's larger than normal, maybe have faint calcifications. In sickle cell, you typically have autoinfarction with a small spleen with dense calcifications. So that surely in this case is the least likely diagnosis. And by the way, if you are curious, this was a patient with polycythemia vera. Those patients get large spleens, they can spontaneously rupture or spontaneously bleed. I saw such a case very recently. In this patient with a history of cardiac transplant, what's the most likely diagnosis? If I only look at the images, I see bulky adenopathy or a bulky mass in the mesentery extending near the pancreas and duodenum and then tracking down surrounding the SMA and branch vessels. I would think about lymphoma or some other malignancy. It, you could think about carcinoid, but it's not a great appearance for carcinoid. It doesn't really look like pancreatic adenocarcinoma because you see no duct dilatation. And TB can give you nodes, but not this kind of appearance. The history also made your life easy. Patients who have 
organ transplants, get immunosuppressive therapy, and one of the potential problems is the patients get post-transplant lymphoma, and this ended up being a post-transplant lymphoma case, and this patient had large B-cell lymphoma. In this ER patient best evaluated for possible dissection, what do you think the diagnosis is? Well, on the images, the aorta looks fine. Could it be lymphoma? Well, the thing is, everything seems to be centered on marked thickening of the esophagus. It looks like primary esophageal pathology, which extends for a long distance. Mediastinitis can involve the esophagus secondarily, but this really looks like primary in the esophagus and extending around and upward for a long distance. And this, in fact, was severe esophagitis. We don't often pay enough attention to the esophagus, but severe esophagitis or other esophageal processes can present with back pain and very much simulate an aortic dissection. The most likely diagnosis in this case, there's a lesion in the tail of the pancreas. You have arterial and venous phase imaging. When you look at the lesion, it could be a neuroendocrine tumor. That's what you're thinking about. But then when you look at its appearance on the arterial phase and the venous phase imaging, its enhancement is exactly the same as the spleen. And that's the classic description of an accessory spleen. If you had a neuroendocrine tumor, which is a thought, it would be more vascular typically than the spleen on both phases, but it would not look the same. It's not going to be lymphoma, obviously, and a solid serous adenoma is an interesting thought, but even in those cases, it does not match the enhancement of the spleen. This is a beautiful example of a leave-alone lesion. It's an accessory spleen. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with a lung mass on chest x-ray is a beautiful example. You see a nodule in the right middle lobe. The key thing is the feeding and draining vessels, very nicely shown on the cinematic rendering. That's not the look of a hamartoma or a primary lung cancer. It's not the look of sarcoidosis. It's the classic appearance of a pulmonary AV malformation. In this patient with hematuria, the most likely diagnosis, well, what do we see? We see a normal right kidney. The left kidney looks infiltrated, particularly the upper two-thirds, and there's infiltration not only of the kidney but the renal pelvis, and the process looks like it's extending down the ureter. So we know we're dealing with a malignancy. Lymphoma usually is bulkier. The kidney would not be small. Clear cell would be vascular. But the truth also is, whether you're thinking clear cell or papillary, it looks like an infiltrating process, particularly the way it goes into the renal pelvis and into the ureter. And my first thought in this case, and the correct answer, was a transitional cell carcinoma. TCCs have many different appearances from small nodules to multiple nodules to infiltration, and they can simulate a renal cell carcinoma, Again, you have to think about the possibility, and it's best seen on these coronal views and 3D rendering. Also, delayed phase imaging, where you see distortion of the calyces and infiltration of the calyces would be very helpful in this patient. In the 60-ish year old with chest pain, the most likely diagnosis is, if we look at the imaging from axial and sagittal, there's a large soft tissue mass with destruction of the body of the sternum. It could be metastatic disease. It could be a plasma cytoma. Theoretically, it could be a chondrosarcoma, but I don't see chondroid matrix. It could be an osteosarcoma. I don't see osteoid matrix. If the patient had had radiation therapy for breast cancer or something else, that would increase the likelihood of some sort of sarcoma. This isn't fibrous dysplasia, and it's not osteomyelitis. The most likely diagnosis in this patient, large mass, bony destruction, sternum, flat bone, well-defined, is a plasma cytoma. A really nice example. Well, that's it. Those were the 10 cases. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you found them helpful. 
and we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Have a great day, everybody. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.